And tell me a bit about the deal then you have with each theater. I mean, you split the box office, so you split the cost. I mean, how do you and say the Queen Elizabeth Playhouse or whatever is in Vancouver, how do you choose what kind of deal to make? And then you go to Edmonton, it's a different deal. How do you do that? Going in on a guarantee with a split box office is a pretty good way to do it. Otherwise, you just, it's a crapshoot. You, you just hope that the audience comes and you, they buy it. But a lot of the theaters here, I don't know about the states, but so many of them, like Manitoba Theater Center, they all have seasons, so they have subscriptions and, and things. So it's not quite as bad as it sounds because a lot of those theaters are subsidized. And who weighs your risk? Is it Marley who goes, you know, I could be risking $300,000 on this. Who weighs that risk? And decides. Uh, whoever my partners are at the time and the people I work with, I, I listen pretty well. I, I go beyond the story I get and just remember. I've been around for so long that <laughs> I can remember sometimes what happened 30 years ago. But, um, you know, there's no, no doubt about it. it, it Showbiz is a crapshoot. I mean, you have no, how are you going to tell who's going to love a show or not? I mean, it's, uh, it's just one of those things. And when you did Cats, did you get backers? I mean, someone had to put some money on the table to get it going. Oh, yeah. Yeah. We, had, we didn't have any trouble getting backers. I've been pretty lucky. Even the other shows I've done, I, I, they've been, they, most of them uh, have made money. Uh, the first one I did with a new one, new backer, uh, and I did, um, I'm, I'm getting my act on the road, <laughs> and she'd never had any money. She'd been investing in shows for years and never had a penny back. She was so, she told all her friends that it's okay, you, you can do that, because uh, I don't know if you remember, the. Um, it was at the uh, ports. We opened the ports with all we did. Ain't misbehaving. I'm getting Mac together, taking it on the road. Pee off. Kathy Michael McGlynn came in and did a phenomenal production of Pee off. Um, you know, you try to choose. I don't go too far off the edge on shows. I mean, I try to think of them as pleasing to the public. That's the point of entertainment. I'm not into the heavy duty stuff. I want to go back to the backers a bit because it seems to be an essential part of the producing pie, so to speak. Who are they? Do you find them? Do they find you? I pretty well know who they are by now. Um, I work a lot with my son, Jeffrey, who does a lot of fundraising, and he certainly works in that world. Um, and you know, are these private private yes. business people in Toronto yes. who say, I have a little money to invest. Do I put it in Apple or do I put it in a show? Yeah. No, it's, it's a lot of that going on. And some people, like we usually have a lot of fun with our investors. You know, they come and they meet the cast and casts are terrific. That way they mingle and talk. And that's why they're there. They just want to enjoy it. And most of them usually do. And your backers are looking for a re real return on their investment, or are they just looking to take a chance and maybe something will happen, but it's showbiz? That's it. And That's it? <laughs> no, no. I get to meet I, the stars? <laughs> no. Uh, everybody, they, all these guys have a lot of money. Now, I say guys. There are some women, too, of ah, course. Mostly guys. <laughs> no, okay. But, um, they just uh, have extra cash, and it's fun, and they know they can manage it. So it, you certainly don't want to spend your grocery money, and I've said that from day one. If you're buying groceries, forget it. Don't give it to me. But, um, so Marlene, okay, so let's actually do it here. Let's pretend you've taken me out to lunch. I'm a potential backer, and you want to bring me into a production called X or whatever. How, how would this conversation go? Well, first of all, I would know what the person does before I go to lunch. I would take you to lunch say, gee, I've got this great show. Would you like to be in it? I wouldn't ask you for your money. Um, I don't put people in that position. I, the people that we go to, we know can afford it. And I mean over afford it. Because it, it's play money. 
you know. Right. You cannot expect miracles w w with a recoupment. But if I'm not if I'm not Robert R. H. If I'm actually you know, Joe Plant. I would know, know before I took you if you could afford it or not. Would you know how much I would be affordable? You know the sums seem like a lot nowadays, uh, but not as much because you get more investors. There's a show actually in New York. I can't remember which one it is that has forty four names above the title. Now that drove the producers crazy, and that was one that had fifty or more in it. I mean, fifty thousand or more. Yeah. So they had forty-four 40. backers with fifty or more in. Yeah. Managing that's got to be a headache. It's terrible. It's absolutely ridiculous. Um, and what's your sort of minimum floor? If I, I'm Joe Plant, and you know, you know, Joe Plant could put some money in your show. Do you have a minimum floor? Not minimum, but it's usually. He says, "Yeah, I can put 20, in a hundred dollars." Twenty-five grand. Twenty-five is bottom, yeah. Yeah. You try not to have forty-four producers, <laughs> as I call them, because they all want to get their two cents worth in, and it's too many people. You're right. Just running it is a nightmare. So if I'm Joe Plant and I just put uh, fifty thousand dollars in your next show, are you expecting Joe to say? Marlene, I think you should cast so and so. Or Marlene, I saw this great show in London. Should, do they do that? Yeah. Or? Oh yeah, oh yeah. You you get a lot of comments. Uh, have you seen this? Have you seen that? Um, yeah, but some are more interested than others. I mean, it's funny when you invest in something that you don't keep track of, like some people do with stocks. You know, and then if they Get it back, terrific. Um, the bigger shows are really hard now because they're so expensive to do. I mean, it's just ridiculous. But um, and they're expensive because of the tech that they require, because yeah. of the royalties you're paying, or why? Yeah, all of the above. Really. Is it possible to sort of give me a kind of comparison of your weekly for say, you know, a show that you would do in theater in the Dell, Hair, and then? you know, a large show now, just to give people an idea of the weekly you're trying to cover. I mean, when you did hair, do you remember what your weekly was? No, because I didn't have anything to do with that part. Okay. Um, for us to do a show, just a normal mid-size, probably to get it up is 500 grand. And you have, you have to have that up front from your backers to get the whole machine going, is that yeah. right? And do you ever take loans from the bank, or is it just all the Joe plants of the world have put in their 50 and you have the cash to go? Yeah. Or do you have to go to a bank? I don't go to a bank. I, would I, if I were a bank, would I put money in show business? I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> so is a written rule that you do not use money from your box office advance to mount a show? Is that common It's sense? actually illegal. It's fraud. If you take out the money before, you can do it the night you open, after you've opened. The next day you can use, but you can't use that box office money until the show opens. Because what happens if the show doesn't open? Yep. A number of, or several producers we know, um, all the pre-sales before they opened. Why the push for pre-sales then, if you can't use that cash until you open? Well, we both know in cases that, that they didn't <laughs> wait, <laughs> and that's what you know where they are. You end up in orange <laughs> jumpsuits. <laughs> um, it, it gives you a pretty good idea of how the show is going to sell so that you could relax a little. If nothing else, you just wouldn't get so uptight about, oh my gosh, am I going to really sell this? Um, it, it, again, it, 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 you're just guessing if the public is going to like it or catch on or who knows. And when you sit down to make up your budgets and do your deal with Schumann's, how much, Schubert's, how much, m what proportion of your budget do you put into marketing and publicity? It's starting to vary a bit 
not uh, newspaper advertising is expensive. Um, I I don't know as a percentage. It pr in a five hundred thousand, you probably spend one hundred and fifty. Um, so emailing is certainly a lot, but you pay for those lists. Those e blasts, you know, cost right. money. But you've just said a thirty-year budget will be for marketing yeah. in Harbor City. Yeah. But I think it's lightening up a bit, only because of everybody has e blasts now, and that right. certainly helps. Is that sort of third of the budget rule? Is that peculiar to producing in Toronto, or do you think they do that in New York and London? And I think they do it everywhere. Right. I, I don't know what they are because I'm not there, but I know New York Times is not cheap. Right. And uh, and pets, the papers sometimes make it, but I I gather it's a thirty thousand dollar one page ad in the New York Times. That's a lot of money. I would thought it would be more. And that well, it may be by now. That was about five years ago. Yeah. But you know, if if you don't, because they keep saying people aren't always reading newspapers, which is true, but a lot of the population is. Mm -hmm. So it it's expensive. There's no question. I think, at least I have found in Toronto, word of mouth. You can't beat good word of mouth. Because let's talk about word of mouth. You as a producer, how long does it take? word of mouth to actually get going in a city? Ten days tops, so usually in a week. I mean, you just hope that everybody goes and says, I saw this great show last night, you've got to go and see it. And they usually, at least we have found out from box offices, it's usually, I mean, if they're going to go, they go fairly quickly and it keeps spreading from there. So if you start off slow with a show, you pretty well think it's not going to make it, but if the show starts off fast, do you have a better idea that it's going to make it? Uh, well, no, that's not always true, because some people go just for titles or who's in it. It doesn't matter if it's good, bad, or indifferent, they'd still go. Right. But again, that that's the crapshoot. You don't know. And you as a producer, how many weeks do you wait before you got a sense of where, whether the show is going to run or whether you're going to close it? Probably about four weeks. Right. Because don't forget, I, I don't, have I ever, no, I've never worked on a subscription, I've never had a subscription. So it's all individual, which right. is really tough. Right. Um, so you have to have a lot of faith in the show you're doing. 